Hello, my name is Matt Ferreira. I'm the Business Administrator for SAU 21, and I'll be presenting the Seabrook School District Proposed Operating Budget and Associated Warrant Articles for fiscal year 2020-2021 that will be going on the ballot in March of 2020. The first warrant article, the operating budget, is in the amount of $15,058,049. This represents an estimated um, 5.5834 per thousand of the tax rate and is compared to the default budget of $14,967,362. So when the school board and administration um, develops an operating budget, um, we really take a look at um, you know what we're what we're looking to achieve, what's the goals and mission of the school district. Um, as we all know, um, our values are represented in the um, in the budget in that um, how we allocate resources um, indicates what our priorities lie. Um, so our proposed operating budget does reflect um, this commitment to providing an education that promotes a passion for learning and to provide a safe atmosphere which is conducive to educating, nurturing, and empowering all students to become responsible, productive, tolerant members of society. Um, specifically, we look at goals um, that we're looking to achieve um, in the upcoming fiscal year, 2020-2021, um, um, and how to make an investment in, in resource and allocate resources that truly enhances our academic programs and experiences that supports all of our students. So based on this overarching goal, there are really three primary objectives, the first of which is to continue investment in our Seabrook students to provide the opportunities and education that empowers individuals to be caring, competent, responsible citizens who really value learning as a lifelong process. Additionally, we're looking to focus on student learning to fully maximize and leverage the implementation of our SAU-wide competency-based education initiative. So this is an initiative that um, we, we've, we implemented two years ago. Um, we're working across the entire SAU. We've hired a consultant um, and we're really um, going deep um, as far as implementing this initiative to make sure that our curriculum is aligned across the entire SAU, that we're preparing our students, whether it's Seabrook, Northampton, Hampton Falls, um, Southampton, all in the same manner to, um, to graduate up into Winnicunit. Additionally, we're looking to provide appropriate funding and allocation of resources that maintains and continuously improves the current high level of learning opportunities to properly prepare our students while always being cognizant of fiscal responsibility to the community and taxpayers of Seabrook. We understand that there are um, outside um, you know, powers that, um, or influencers that affect how we may um, budget and spend money accordingly. We need to be cognizant of um, you know, revenue coming in from other sources, whether it's the power plant revenue or business revenue or our real real estate revenue. So um, we, we feel that we brought forth a budget that is responsible um, and is, is only a slight increase um, and um, will only marginally affect um, taxpayer dollars. When we're looking at um, a budget, we always need to take a look at enrollment, um, both on a, a short-term basis and a long-term um, basis. Um, when we're looking to budget. So we do contract with the New England School Development Council um, to, pr to pr prepare um, enrollment projections um, for the SAU. Um, these enrollment projections are two years old, so we, the SAU has contract or has budgeted for another set of projections to be conducted um, this next year and in fiscal year 2020-2021. So um, this, this is something we're cognizant of. Seabrook School District does anticipate a fairly flat enrollment over the next three years. However, there, are, uh, there has been some changes in town in regard to uh, developments and, and housing projects um, that can affect um, enrollment going forward. Um, there's a certain um, transient population that, um, that has a direct effect on the budget. 
So overall, um, the proposed 2020-2021 Seabrook School District operating budget is $15,058,049, which reflects an increase of 3.7%, or $537,225 increase from the prior year. Um, further, I will note that the propo proposed operating budget is 90,687,000 or 0.61% higher than the default budget of $14,967,362. So this really reflects um, the, you know, how, how lean the budget is on um, the fact that there's only this slight delta between the operating budget and the default budget. Um, it does reflect significant reductions um, as well as level funding on any discretionary accounts um, and really the slight overall increase is due to contractual and legally mandated expenditures. Some of these budget drivers um, are, are really represented in three major components in the budget. So there are three components that represent $504,042 of the total $537,000 $225,000 increase. This includes special education, which is seeing an increase of $141,701, um, which is a result of students' individualized education plans, their IEPs, and th these, these services are mandated by state and federal law. Additionally, our Seacoast Education Association CBE, CBA salaries um, have increased $224,170. This represents the teacher's contract um, that was passed at ballot um, last year and includes a 2.75% cost of living adjustment as well as step increases for the new collective bargaining agreement. Finally, the, the third major driver is employee benefits, which is an increase of $138,171, which reflects an increased um, retirement contribution, FICA and Medicare contributions, um, as well as workers' compensation insurance due to increased salaries based on the new CBA, as well as an increase in our health insurance premiums, which reflect a 1.8% guaranteed maximum rate for premiums, um, as well as staffing changes resulting in, in plan election changes. So if you were to remove these three increases, um, the budget would, would really be um, an increase of only $33,186, or a slight increase of 0.23%. So embedded in the um, operating budget is cost of living adjustments for our employees. There's three classifications of employees, um, the first of which I mentioned earlier was, was our teachers. So that's, that falls under the C collective bargaining agreement at 2.75%. Additionally, we have our paraprofessional um, employees. Th these employees fall under um, SESPA, so the Seacoast Education Association, I'm sorry, Seacoast um, Educational Personnel Association, um, who, is, who is actually a separate warrant article that will be on the ballot this year. Um, so there are no increase included for our SESPA employees. Um, this, this will be a separate warrant article that, um, that will be presented. The third classification of employee are our non-union employees. So this includes our administrators, our office staff, our um, food service workers, facilities staff, and technology um, team. Um, what we do is we benchmark um, our, our cost of living adjustment against the rate of inflation. So we take a look at the consumer price index, um, CPI, for this geographic region. Um, for the prior year. So in this case, it would be July of 2018 to July of 2019. Um, and that came out to be a 2.0% rate of inflation. So um, we've included a 2.0% cost of living adjustment for our non-union staff. So now I'll go into detail on the specific um, functions of the budget. Um, I will um, and briefly um, um, describe any significant increase or decrease um, with a rationale for that variance. So the first item is regular education, which is budgeted at $4,575,016, which is an increase of $146,325 or 3.3%. Um, so this reflects that new 
um, teachers' collective bargaining agreement, their step, um, cost of living adjustment, as well as step increases. And these increases were slightly offset by a reduction in our books, print media, purchasing accounts. Our special education budget is $2,089,778, which is an increase of $141,701, or 7.27%. 7 so again, um, as I had mentioned earlier, this is based on um, individual students' um, IEPs, which are mandated by state and federal law. Our student activities account is budgeted at $72,085, which is an increase of $12, or 0.2%. Um, this reflects really effectively no change from the prior year. Um, however, there were adjustments in individual line items within this function, um, which does include an increase in dues and fees, um, as well as extracurricular stipends, which were offset by a decrease in our speaker fees. Our summer school is budgeted at $20,760, which reflects no change um, from last year. Um, similarly, our guidance budget is $153,480, which is a decrease of $2,000. $909 or a 1.86% reduction. Um, this, this reflects a reduced cost um, due to staffing changes. So when we, um, when we have someone that retires or leaves to go to a, a, a different school district, um, we budget in a, a certain amount for that replacement person, staff person. So um, sometimes that comes in higher or lower. In this case, um, we anticipate a cost savings. Our health budget is $146,813. This is an increase of $24,294, or 19.83%. Um, and this reflects a staffing change. Again, we, when we have turnover, we may see a higher um, replacement costs are lower. In this case, it's going to be significantly higher based on the outgoing person. Um, additionally, we did have a cost of living adjustment um, per the CBA. Our speech budget is $224,727, which is an increase of $8,281, or 3.83%. So again, this reflects the new um, Teachers Collective Bargaining Agreement with cost of living adjustment and step increases. Our other support services um, is budgeted at $1, um, and this is um, just to keep the account open in case there is um, potential future need. However, we do not anticipate um, needing to utilize this account um, in the next fiscal year. Our improvement of instruction budget is $143,293, or an increase of $4,517, or 3.25%. Um, and this reflects a salary cost of living adjustment, step increases, and a slightly higher actual um, salary um, over the original budgeted amount. Our educational media account is budgeted at $181,672, or $6,049 increase, 3.44%. And the primary driver for this increase is due to um, staff salary cost of living adjustment and step increases. Our computer services budget is $304,887 or an increase of $27,680 um, or 9.99%. Um, I will note that our computer services accounts do align with our school technology plan um, as well as the associated technology replacement cycles within that plan. Um, we always, um, you know, with technology and other um, replacements, um, you know, so whether it's technology or facilities, we always we, we implement re replacement cycles. That way we can minimize fluctuations, high or low, um, and we can kind of flatten out those costs over a period of time with proper planning. So in this case, we're um, continuing our investment in the one-to-one -one Chromebook initiative. Um, I will note that last year was an off year on this replacement cycle. We did note it last year that, that it would be a... Um, abnormally lower cost last year, but going forward with the planned replacement purchasing cycle, um, we do anticipate it to be approximately level with what we have this year um, and moving forward. Our support services budget is $116,700 um, with no increase budgeted. Our Board of Education budget is $53,911 $53, or a reduction 
of $600 or a 1.1% decrease. Um, and this reflects a reduction in our ad advertising and annual meeting accounts to reflect our actual expenditure history. I will note that um, when we go through the budgeting process, um, we there are certain accounts where we have initiatives or specific items that we, we are looking to invest in, whereas there are some accounts where it's fairly consistent uh, purchases year over year, in, in which case we will look at expenditure history, uh, both prior year and the three year average. And if we, had not, if we haven't been spending the account, we will reduce it to appropriate levels or for overspending, we may increase it um, appropriately. Our SAU services budget is $801,868, I'm sorry, $601,868, which is an increase of $17,564, or 3.01%. Um, so this reflects um, the, um, the new aligned vision of the SAU. Um, you know, last year we brought forth an SAU budget that um, reflects a, a more collaborative, um, cohesive SAU where we have all of our districts working together um, for a shared vision. Um, this this continues that that outlook. Um, we we have already recognized um, cost savings um, by by utilizing shared services. Um, where we are looking to create efficiencies and, and offer better services across the district and, and align services where um, we, are, we are offering the same, um, same programming, the same services in each district, um, K through eight, um, to prepare them for um, Winnipeg High School. So um, we, do, we do feel that we, we've already um, ac accomplished some of this goal. Um, we've We've gone to direct billing for Medicaid across the district, recognizing um, savings there. Uh, we are consolidating our special education um, transportation accounts to better utilize those ser services. Um, we have uh, we identified ESOL, our English as a Second Language um, teaching positions, as um, a position that we couldn't we can share across the district, as opposed to having. Um, separate part-time employees in each district, um, which not only saves us money, but also provides us a higher quality person um, in that full-time role as opposed to um, those part-time positions. So our school administration budget is $593,283 or an increase of $20,055 or 3.5%. So the primary driver for this increase is due to the um, administrative salary cost of living adjustment and step increases. Our buildings account is budgeted at $841,961, which is an increase of $12,813 or 1.55%. Um, this slight increase reflects the planned purchase of um, extremely necessary lockers um, for the middle school. Um, those lockers have reached end of life um, and are failing at a rapid rate um, and there are no um, replacement parts available. So our facilities team have literally been, um, you know, welding these lockers together and um, kind of band-aiding them, but it's, um, this is a replacement that is absolutely necessary. So what we plan to do is utilize $20,000 from the furniture account in this buildings operating budget and then we will be uh, we do plan to withdraw 70 the remaining seventy eight thousand dollars from the building maintenance expendable trust to fund um, this very necessary locker replacement additionally our grounds budget is sixty three thousand five hundred dollars which is an increase of zero dollars um, for 2020 2021. Our vehicle expenses budget is $3,200, um, which is similarly um, seeing no increase for the next year. Our transportation is budgeted at $874,552, which is an increase of $6,603, or 0.64%. Um, this reflects year two of our five-year contract with First Student. Um, they supply our regular education, athletic field trip and other transportation services. 
Um, and this was slightly offset by a decrease in our special education transportation costs that we do anticipate for the next year. Our employee benefits is budgeted at $3,536,368. This is an increase of $138,171 or 4.07%. Um, and again, this reflects a 1.8% guaranteed maximum rate for our health insurance premiums as well as staffing changes that have resulted in plan um, election changes and increases in FECA, retirement and workers comp um, due to salary increases. <coughs> our debt service is budgeted at $126,436 which is a decrease of $1,499 I'm sorry, $1 or 1.17%. 1 um, our debt service account provides the principal and interest payments on the bond issue for the building project. I will also note that the last payment is scheduled for August of 2024. Our interfund transfer is budgeted at $1. Um, what this is, is a transfer from the general fund into our food service fund. Um, the food service fund is separate from the general fund, so if our food service um, program runs a deficit, we are required by law to transfer funds from the general fund to cover um, that deficit. However, we do not anticipate um, needing to do so next year. Um, as such, our food service budget is $333,857, a decrease of $10,829, or 3.14% reduction. Um, this reflects decreases in our food and milk supplies, USDA commodities, and equipment accounts based on ex expenditure history. So that br brings us to our default budget, which is $14,967,362, which is $90,687,000 less than the proposed operating budget. Um, I will note that the default budget is calculated by utilizing the prior year's operating budget. Um, reduced or and increased, um, whichever may be the case, by debt service, contracts, and other obligations um, that were previously incurred or mandated by law, um, and, the, and then reduced by any one-time expenditures um, contained in the operating budget. So that brings us to um, our second warrant article, which is for the Seacoast Educational Support Personnel Association. Um, so I had mentioned earlier, our paraprofessionals uh, cost of living adjustment was not included in the operating budget. That is rolled into um, the uh, separate warrant article, warrant article number two. Um, and this is a four-year um, warrant article. So for year one, the total cost is $29,086. Um, and then in years two, three, and four, it does um, increase... Um, to just over $56,000, $48,000, and $59,000, um, which reflects um, an, uh, an approach to, um, to address our health insurance issues with our paraprofessionals. Um, we anticipate that this will um, constitute a 0 0.0107 per thousand of the tax rate. So, um, this proposed collective bargaining agreement is, like I said, is for our invaluable SESPA employees um, to provide them improved compensation and benefits to better retain and attract um, these educational associates. Um, additionally, we've added contractual language to better manage these employees more efficiently um, and safeguards against potential Affordable Care Act IRS penalties um, by um, including health insurance um, in this um, collective bargaining agreement. So um, health insurance was our main priority for this warrant article. Um, this is, we, we've been employing these, um, these staff members at 34.9 hours per week um, under the collective bargaining agreement's um, rate of 35 hours, which constitutes full-time status. So as such, these employees do not receive um, health insurance even though they are working essentially a full-time um, status. Additionally, the Department of Labor does recognize that any staff member who works over 30 hours um, is 
as full time and should receive benefits. So it doesn't align with our collective bargaining agreement. Um, as such, um, the, the district of Seabrook is um, is exposed to IRS um, Affordable Care Act um, penalties for not offering affordable health care to these employees. Um, so we we really made a, a an effort to bring forth a warrant article that was um, fiscally responsible for the for the taxpayers because health insurance can be pricey so we've we've ramped it up over a number of years to um, limit that cost um, but also address this very important issue um, because it's it's not only the IRS penalties that we're worried about there's also a very real cost to turnover um, we're seeing a 25 percent um, turnover rate for these um, really important employees uh, who are dealing who are working with our special education students as well as our, as well as our regular education students um, you know as far as special education goes um, these are these are students that are in greatest need um, and are, are really the most um, fragile students that need oftentimes will need consistency so having a, a high turnover rate can really affect their progress um, additionally as we as mentioned before, we are implementing competency-based education, um, which really does emphasize individualized and personalized learning. So these employees are um, in the classroom working with students on a one-on-one -on -one basis, um, assisting the teachers um, and really helping not only our special education students, but our regular education students um, to be able to, to um, implement this very important initiative and this new, this new learning um, and teaching model um, that we're that we're bringing across the SAU. So uh, I can't stress the the importance of these staff members. Um, they're they're you know on the front lines. They're they're down and dirty with with the students. Um, and short of the teacher, these these are the these are the staff members that can have that can really affect the most positive change. Um, so as I mentioned, this CBA is a four year agreement. Um, year one includes a 2.5% cost of living adjustment, and then years two through four, um, it drops down to 1%, um, as well as an addition of a top step in year two. Um, finally, there is an extra longevity stipend, uh, stipend for anyone that achieves 20 years of service, um, which is another $200. Um, I, I will note that these percentages um, are, are really are a minimal cost to the school district uh, because these are low-cost employees. The average CESPA employee has an annual salary of $21,150. Um, so this this is this really is a, um, a low-cost um, employee that really provides a big benefit to the school district. So um, as I'd mentioned, um, this agreement does include health insurance. Um, however, we did ramp it up in a, in a tiered approach to minimize the cost to the district. Uh, we didn't want to have it um, have a, a big cost in one fell swoop. So what we're doing is we're offering eligible employees um, single coverage, so they won't be offered uh, two-person or family coverage um, under the site of service plan, which is our lowest cost plan. Um, and then we're ramping up the premium percentage that the um, school district will contribute. Um, so in year one, it'll be 0% from the school district. Then in year two, 40%, year three, 60%. And then finally in year four, um, we're gonna get to 80%, which is where um, what, what we're targeting. Um, so again, I can't emphasize the importance, both from a um, exposure, um, mitigating risk to the school district, but also um, as far as retaining um, these very valuable employees and also attracting these employees. Um, we've, we've seen that um, we've, we've had a very difficult time um, hiring these employees. Um, additionally, we have some language adjustments to the agreement that, um, that is intended to help the district better um, you know, better operate more efficiently, maintain morale, um, and really manage um, the, the school better. Um, this includes um, requiring a, um, a monthly staff department meeting 
that these employees will attend um, at their normal rate of pay. Um, currently, they come in, they do their job, and they leave um, just because we have such tight hour restrictions on them. But for them to truly be part of the team and the school district, we'd like to include them in more of our um, team-wide um, meetings. Um, additionally, we're including one 30-minute work period per week for these employees. Um, that way they can complete some necessary paperwork, relevant meetings, or other activities that are assigned by their supervisor. Um, this is particularly important when we're looking at Medicaid reimbursement. Um, we need to provide them the opportunity to um, complete um, that paperwork. <coughs> Um, we've also identified sick and personal leave as um, an important item to address, and this has been included in the agreement. Um, across the entire SAU, uh, for all our employees, we do have a mentality of use it or lose it, and part of that is creating a morale and different culture to discourage that mentality, uh, but then there's other, we can include contract languages that will also discourage it. So we've. We've included um, abuse language in the agreement. Um, we've also streamlined our sick bank um, language to, 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 to streamline it and, and make it simplify it. Um, we've included um, additional rollover of sick leave to minimize potential for utilization, um, as well as a cap on our personal days um, per school on the same day during the months of May and June. Um, we've included some other um, small language um, clarifications, um, you know, in regard to bereavement, um, assembly of delegates, our arbitration process, use of facilities, and hiring practice, um, which have, has no um, substantial, um, there's no substantial difference from prior years. This just clarifies it more um, as far as the intent, the original intent. Um, Moving on, I had mentioned costs, um, but um, I will mention again that year one is just over $29,000 to Seabrook. Year two is just over $56,000. Year three is $48,000, and year four is $59,000, um, which really is a minimal cost when you're looking at the overall scheme and the overall budget. Um, that we, we are presenting. Um, this is just a, a small fraction. Uh, however, this is incredibly important to uh, a properly run school. Um, you know, the, in talking about the impact, I spoke about it earlier, but we are having significant issues with, with turnover. Um, we're, we're, we're finding that it's taking months to, um, to fill open positions. Um, we have a 25% turnover rate. Um, when you, when we, we speak to these employees, um, health insurance coverage is the, the number one cited reason for either leaving or for not accepting a job. Additionally, when you do a comparative analysis and look at other school districts in our area, other SAUs, um, we are at a competitive advantage, disadvantage. Um, we offer lower compensation and, and we do not offer benefits, whereas those other SAUs do. So um, this, this really limits the pool of qualified candidates um, to, to work with um, this disadvantaged population and to move forward a competency-based education initiative. Um, I will make one final note that um, historically it's been, it's been difficult to pass these collective bargaining agreements. Um, because we have a collaborative agreement within the SAU, which is a little unique in that um, this ballot initiative needs to pass in each individual district in order for it to pass in any one district. So, um, so you'll see this on your ballot, both on the CV on the Seabrook local ballot as well as the Winnicott ballot. And if it fails in you know Hampton Falls or on the Winnicott ballot or Southampton or Seabrook, it will fail for everyone. So it's really important that that um, that this that you vote on both ballots because um, the Seabrook will see it on both sides. So that moves us on to Warrant Article Three, which is the roof replacement um, in the amount of one hundred thirty-five thousand three hundred twenty dollars. Um, 
this constitutes a 0 0.0501 per thousand um, tax rate increase. Um, this is um, a proposed roof replacement year two of a two-year plan. Um, so this was, um, this is the second section of the elementary school roof um, which did reach an end of life. Um, the first section was a warrant article on last year's ballot. Um, that, that warrant article did pass and the project was completed this past summer. Um, and I will note that the proposed replacement al does align with the overall roof replacement plan that was developed in conjunction with our roof consultant. Warrant article number four is the natural gas generator in the amount of $30,000. This represents a 0 0.0111 per thousand tax rate increase. Um, the existing generator is gas powered um, and as such the fuel is stored in single lined tanks um, which really provides for the potential for um, um, leaks which is not something that we um, we want to get involved with and will be and if there were any leaks would create a much larger cost to the school district um, and and just be fundamentally unsafe um, so um, this current generator is 30 plus years old um, and, and, and has reached end of life so the proposal is to replace the generator with a new natural gas powered generator um, and this will eliminate the potential for leakage and or other uh, potential failure. Our warrant article 5 is the building maintenance expendable trust um, which is $75,000 um, to be um, utilized from unreserved fund balance um, so this will not affect your tax rates. Um, so the building maintenance expendable trust was established for the purpose of funding and safeguarding the school district against building and facilities related costs um, or building maintenance related expenditures. An anticipated withdrawal, um, which I had mentioned earlier, um, of approximately $75,000 from this trust is expected to fund the replacement of the middle school lockers. The current lockers have reached end of life and are failing, as I had mentioned earlier. Um, there are no replacement parts available and it is costing us significant, significant costs both in, um, in labor and in, um, in, in specialty pieces that we're utilizing to repair um, these lockers. So it is important to note that funding from this building maintenance expendable trust does come from any available year-end fund balance and is not raised via additional taxation. Additionally, the balance for this trust is $155,123 and the target is set at $200,000. Warrant article number six is our special education expendable trust, um, which is proposing the utilization of $50,000 from unassigned fund balance. Um, the special education continues to be um, a challenge um, and, and budgeting and associated funding um, continues to present fiscal challenges to the school district. Um, the special education expendable trust was established for the purpose of funding unanticipated special education costs. So as such, it is beneficial to replenish this, this trust to safeguard and mitigate future unexpected costs. Um, I will also note that funding for this special education expendable trust does come from potential available year-end fund balance and is not raised via additional taxation. The current balance for this trust is $241,256,000 and our target is $400,000. Um, I'll also note that this was updated um, from an original target of $300,000. Um, this target was set based on um, the worst case scenario for an out of district placement. However, this that number was set years ago um, and as costs have escalated since then um, and 400,000 is more an more appropriate number. Um, at Winnicunnet, for example, we have one student 
um, out, placed out of district at $450,000 and another at $475,000. So it, it is a very real risk. Additionally, um, we have some significant overages on um, our special education costs for this current fiscal year, 2019-2020. We are approximately $420,000 over budget. Um, so we do anticipate that we will need to withdraw funds from this trust in order to um, to cover some of those overage costs. So the final warrant article, um, number seven, is a citizen's petition article uh, for child benefit services. This was presented um, from Sacred Heart School, um, and they are asking for $18,400 um, to provide child benefit services. Um, this constitutes a 0 0.0068 per thousand tax rate. Um, and I will also note that this was submitted to provide supplemental funding for Seabrook students attending Sacred Heart School. So that brings us to the end of our um, proposed 2020-2021 Seabrook School District Operating Budget and Associated Warrant Articles. Um, we want to thank you, um, you know, the community, um, as well as the school board, parents, students, staff, um, and everyone in the community for your outstanding support of the Seabrook School District. Thank you.